Hi there, and we finally reached our final video in this series. Uh, I finished reviewing my book. Obviously, I couldn't cover everything. I have a lot more in here um, that I didn't cover, or even uh, when I covered it, I didn't go too much in depth uh, because, you know, it's just impossible to cover everything. In these short YouTube format videos, but um, I hope uh, it was useful for you. Um, I'm sure at this point uh, it's kind of hard to add something, uh, you know, some revolutionary new knowledge because it's already so vast. If you watched uh, YouTube videos of other uh, from other sources, read articles, you you already know. About a lot of this stuff, but I guess uh, if I could, if I could accomplish at least one thing and one thing only, which is put Kazakh archery on the map of uh, you know of Asiatic horsebow archery, uh, that would be you know my main goal because, like I said earlier, it's such a shame that uh, one of the largest and one of the last nomadic states is pretty much underrepresented nobody knows about us you know when you when you talk about kazakhstan nobody thinks of kazakh archers well i i, I gotta uh, kind of um, correct myself now we have dimash of course with his magic music he uh, uh, and singing he kind of uh, uh, helped to improve that image a little bit but we are also uh, should be famous for our horseback archers because you know we are part of the same tradition as others. Before the Sovietization, before we were turned forcibly uh, to settled, we were one of the largest, or maybe the largest nomadic uh, peoples still remaining. I'm talking about end of 20th century beginning uh, end of 19th century beginning of 20th century we were the largest uh, nomadic peoples surviving uh, to to that point and then uh, we lost it all we lost our traditions we lost uh, half of our population actually that's true half of our population we lost in the beginning of 20th century the, there was uh, part of the Soviet so-called collectivization effort, which was basically turning nomads to, to, to settled people forcibly because uh, they didn't have enough time, they wanted to rush things. It also coincided with um, great, great famine uh, that uh, kind of left all our livestock without food. And also they took the livestock from families uh, to kind of uh, accommodate their economical plan. And that all co caused huge uh, uh, famine and hunger. And at that point, not only we lost most of our traditions and language and, you know, just almost entire culture, but half of the population was gone maybe even more than half depending on the sources and uh, one of the great traditions that we lost was archery was archery and i remember um well first of all there are no uh there is no lineage to my knowledge at least nobody surfaced as of today who would say uh you know my father or my grandfather taught me uh, the art of archery that he learned from his father or grandfather or etc. So that umbilical cord got severed, and uh, we don't have we don't have that knowledge directly. So this is why we had to use uh, reconstruction to reconstruct it from from the scratch. That mirror that I talked about, uh, pick up the tiny tiny uh, you know shrapnel tiny tiny pieces of that mirror and trying to glue it together 
the best we could and that's that's all we can do that's all we can do but um, uh, today it's kind of reviving uh, we have a few federations in Kazakhstan and by the way uh, at the time as I was writing this first option I was complaining about it a lot I wrote that you know uh, it should have been addressed you know why why don't we have them we should have them in every city there, there should be a club in every city we are the nation of horseback archers and we don't have that but today thank you uh, thank God uh, uh, I, I wrote this I started writing this in uh, 2008 and uh, 7 and 8 so uh, uh, more than 12 years later the situation is finally improving not as uh, not a massive improvement not a landslide improvement not a not a tide uh, improvement but an improvement nevertheless we have a lot more archers today uh, competitions are more mm -hmm. often we have champions uh, we have federations and they're trying to provide uh, they're trying to organize uh, the events our archers uh, often travel abroad uh, to part participate in uh, international competitions at least uh, I'm talking about the pre-COVID era I don't know what's gonna happen next nobody does but uh, at least uh, 2019 was a very good year for archery uh, then we all went to uh, quarantine everything was halted and postponed uh, nobody shot for one year and so we will see what will happen in 2021 hopefully it will be better but uh, this is a great tradition uh, we hope we will revive it we hope that there will be more Kazakh archers joining this uh, international movement international family and uh, that you will keep hearing more about it and that my little book and this series of videos will help that process to happen a little bit thank you very much thank you for staying with me uh, once again the book is available on Amazon if you want to purchase it I will leave uh, the link uh, the link in description and uh, I wish you uh, good horseback archery I wish you uh, good results in whatever you're doing best of luck stay healthy and hopefully maybe I will meet some of you at some of the events in the future bye bye